Hey everyone, this is Gabriel from the I Want to Build It channel. One of my biggest goals for this channel is to get people to start building and to get people that do build to reach for new levels. On Learn a Tool School, we explore skills and tools that are intimidating to venture into and aim to demystify them. And on this first episode of Learn a Tool School, we look into what you need to know to buy your first MIG welder. A MIG welder is usually most beginners' first choice when getting into welding. It is without a doubt the easiest welding style to learn, while being quite versatile and inexpensive, relatively speaking. Now I am not going to claim to be an expert when it comes to welding, but over the last two years, however, I have went through the process of learning about it, choosing a welder, and learning how to weld. So I think I can provide some pretty cool baseline information if you're thinking on getting into it, which I highly recommend that you do. Because just like every other thing that is a little bit harder to learn and grasp, it really is one of the most fulfilling skills to learn in the shop. So the first question that most people will usually have when they start looking at welders is what is the difference between this flux core and MIG and which one should I really be doing? When you weld, you're essentially heating metals and melting them together. The biggest difference between MIG and flux core is the method used to protect the metal being welded. This is called shielding, and without shielding, oxygen and contaminants in the air would compromise the weld and produce a poor and very weak result. In MIG welding, your welding gun basically shoots a continuous flow of gas that blows away and replaces the air around your weld. Whereas in flux core welding, there is no gas, but instead, there's a material embedded into the core of the wire that when burnt by the heat of the process, creates a fluxing effect and also produces shielding gas, which emits itself out of the metal to protect that weld from the air. All right, so that settles that, but which one is better and which one should you be doing? The answer is, well, depends what you want. Note that most wire feed machines will do both MIG and flux core, but less expensive ones may not come with the extra components needed to do MIG welding. The MIG welder creates nicer and cleaner welds and it's easier to learn and use. It also makes it possible to weld much thinner metals. But because it basically shoots a continuous flow of shielding gas on your weld puddle, it can't be done outside and especially in windy conditions. Even a mild breeze will prevent you from welding successfully with a MIG. The wind basically blows away the gas. In this situation a flux core is better, but flux core welding is better suited to weld thicker metals on less detail oriented applications. It creates a lot of spatter and it also creates a crust of slag on top of the weld which needs to be removed afterwards. It is however much cheaper to do since you don't have to buy any gas and some flux core welders that don't come with the capability of MIG welding can be extremely inexpensive to purchase. Advantages of a MIG welder. Number one, it's pretty easy to do. Number two, does a better job with no spatter and no slag to remove. Number three, it can do very detail oriented welds and it can perform well on thin metals. Number four, with the right equipment, you can MIG weld aluminum and even stainless steel. Advantages of doing flux core. Number one, the fact that you don't have to buy gas and the fact the machines that come out of the box without the equipment required to MIG weld are a lot cheaper. It just makes the whole process a lot more mm, affordable. Number two, you can weld thicker metals. Most of the time you could weld something a lot thicker than you could at the same amperage doing MIG. And of course, the third reason, you can weld outdoors. And that's probably the biggest advantage of flux core welding over MIG. If you're a farmer and your tractor breaks down in the middle of the field, flux core welding can save the day. Conclusion. I would say that MIG welding is probably the preferred method for a small scale hobbyist. I mostly always do MIG welding. But of course, if you can't afford it, flux core will get you into this for pretty cheap. And depending what you're doing, it probably will be good enough for you. But don't expect to create those beautiful, gorgeous welds. And definitely don't plan on welding any thin sheet metal because you'll probably just keep ripping your hair out and burning holes through the metal, like I did. To MIG weld, you need gas. And the most common gas in MIG welding is probably the C25 mix, which is a specific mixture of CO2 and argon. 
In general, the more CO2 is in the mix, the harder the weld gets and the deeper the weld penetrates. So pure CO2 is great for welding thick metal, while pure argon is usually only used for welding soft things like aluminum. In general, C25 mix is a great all-purpose gas for MIG welding mild steel. Okay, but what about electricity? That's something that people are often concerned about when buying a welder. What's amperage? Can you plug it in a regular household outlet? The higher the output amperage rating, the thicker you can weld. But the input voltage and amperage requirements, however, refer to the power you'll use to feed the machine. Most MIGs need 240 volt receptacles, even many 120 volt models may require a 20 amp receptacle as opposed to a standard 15 amp 120 volt receptacle like we typically have here in North America. Remember, with lower input voltage, you'll get less output amperage for welding and thus won't be able to weld as thick a metal. So make sure you know the maximum steel thickness the unit can weld before buying it. Some units may produce good output amperage at the cost of poor duty cycle. Duty cycle, another important thing to keep in mind. Most MIG welders, especially when used at their max, will only weld for a certain period of time before needing to, for lack of a better word, take a break. Keep in mind that this limitation of the duty cycle depends on how heavy the task. If you have all dials cranked to the max, this is when this could become an annoyance. When selecting a welder, look for the duty cycle in the specs. Now another confusing thing is the helmet. What kind do you need? Do you really need an expensive one or does a cheap one do the job? Well, I picked up this one for about 30 bucks and for the most part, it's done the job pretty well. There are far better helmets out there than this one and you'll notice that the most expensive the helmet is, the bigger the viewing area becomes. For the most part, the cheap $40 one is perfectly fine for a beginner. But whatever you do, please do yourself a favor and get yourself an auto dimming helmet. There is nothing like the annoyance of having to lift your helmet up and down just to see what you're doing. Here are other things that you may want to consider buying with your welder. Extra wire spool, including different sizes. Welder's cap to prevent spatter from burning your head. Welding gloves. Welding jacket. Extra and different sizes nozzles and tips. Rolling cart for your welder. Long power cable. Welding pliers. Clamps and magnets to hold things while you weld them. Gas bottle. Regulator and hoses and connections if your welder didn't come with all that. Well, things really start to add up now, don't they? Well, yeah, they do. But the good thing is that you don't have to buy all this stuff right away. I actually pretty much bought none of this when I got started. And then along the way, I bought one piece at a time. So I hope I was able to shed a little bit of light on the daunting task of picking your first welder. And if you weren't 100% sure, I really hope I've helped convince you to buy your first welder. Welding is an awesome skill to have, and it's a skill that you're going to keep improving for the rest of your life. So don't expect to create amazing welds on your first try. It takes a lot of practice before you get good at it. And the cool thing is that each and every welding application is different and will test your skills in its own unique way. But that is all part of the fun. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you end up subscribing, a super thank you. Now get out there and go build something. Hopefully I'll be seeing you in the welding section sometime very soon.